Greetings, this is Neurosciences Connections. I'm Bill Mobley, Chair of the Department of Neurosciences at UCSD. And I'm interviewing a new faculty member in the department, Shauna Wan. Uh, Shauna is a neurologist and a neuroscientist and comes to the department with a great deal of energy and interest in stem cell biology and in the use of stem cells to understand the treatment and the pathogenesis of degenerative diseases. So Shauna, welcome to the department and welcome to Neurosciences Connections. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then the research you're doing. I am a clinically trained neurologist and uh, when I was a resident at UCLA, um, I would be going to the clinic during the day and going to the lab at night. And what was so exciting about that combination for me was that during the day when I go in and see my patients, I will offer them what is the current treatment for um, the diseases that they were suffering from. And there were um, many conundrums that I encounter in the clinic. So for example, um, that the patients were refractory to the current treatment, or simply there were no good treatments at all. And um, what I found so exciting of that combination of my work was that uh, I was able to go into the lab at night, and um, I would try to prove a hypothesis or work on some new idea. And during the day, I would go to my clinic to patients and say, well, you know, this is the current treatment right now but we are also working on something that's really, really exciting in the lab. And hopefully with your cooperation and everybody else, and we can push our, we can develop a new treatment in the, in the near future. That's very exciting, a way of putting the clinical work and the research together. Yes, it is, absolutely, and, and that's why I decided to um, come to UCSD because it has such a great uh, neurosciences department and also the neurosciences uh, environment here. So I, was, I did my postdoctoral fellowship here with uh, Larry Gold, Dr. Larry Goldstein, who is the stem cell biology um, and um, uh, d uh, program director. And um, so there I started developing a, using induced pluripotent stem cells, which are derived from patient fibroblasts. Um, what we can do nowadays is really exciting, is that we can just take a patient uh, biopsy, which is very small, about three, four millimeters. A skin biopsy. Skin yes. biopsy, mm -hmm. really, really tiny, mm -hmm. small piece of skin. And uh, we can get fibroblasts from them after we get the patient's consent. And then we can use, um, we can use virus, we, we can use um, a current, very well-developed program to induce them into, um, induce pluripotent stem cells. And from there, we can generate the cell types that are most vulnerable in neurodegenerative diseases, such as neurons and glia. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to successfully reprogram many patients, um, fibroblasts, and um, that those kind of work are now ongoing in the lab. Sounds exciting. So now that you have these neurons, mm -hmm. and presumably the, the neurons are exactly the kinds of neurons, are very similar to the kinds of neurons one finds in that person's brain, what do you do next? How do those cells help you understand the disease? That is a great question. So um, first, what we want to do is a proof of principle. Um, we want to know if we can actually be able to recapitulate the, the pathophysiology and that we see in that, is, that we see in patients' biopsy, for example, and uh, what has been found in literature before. So um, what we have developed in the lab is a very unique um, cell sorting system where we can actually specifically sort out the neurons that are um, generated from the induced pluripotent stem cells. And we can also isolate the glia at very high purity. And in that combination, what we're able to do is a very precise biochemical assay um, and also cellular assay to look at the pathophysiology that is going on in the, that potentially could be going on in that particular patient's brain. Mm. And what we have been able to see is first we uh, tested these, uh, this idea on uh, familial Alzheimer's disease patients. The reason why we started there was that um, the gene is already known so we know what the cause is for the Alzheimer's disease in those patients. Um, and um, because it is autosomal dominant, it's 100% penetrant. So we know that um, the neurons that we generate will highly reflect um, what the patient's, um, 
maybe going out in their brain, and also be able to see the, the disease, uh, disease um, phenotype. And we have been able to recapitulate a few of the key phenotypes that have been observed uh, both in the postmortem brain from the patients who had FAD and also um, in, um, in rodent models and, and, and also in human fibroblasts. So I think people have talked about the stem cells that are derived this way as diseases in a dish. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, I guess the goal there is to say, do the changes that happen in the brain happen in the culture dish using mm -hmm. what ought to be valid models of neurons, really neurons yes. that reflect this person's uh, genotype, their genetics, yes. and then also huge leg up for drug trials to ask can we change the biology of these neurons in a way that helps them behave more normally. Is Did I get that right? That is absolutely right and um, from so that so we have based our work on the um, familial Alzheimer's disease um, uh, patient uh, cells and um, and we have found that there are actually subtle differences between um, the, the behavior of the neurons in, in terms of the phenotypes um, between different patients. And we suspect that that could come be coming from the specific genetic uh, background from that specific patient. And we know that in, from treating patients in, in clinics that not everybody responds the same to one type of drug. And um, even in one class of medication, we can see that there may be differences of response between different drugs. And we have never really figured out why that is. And um, potentially, it is due to the genetic background from that patient. So with our, our, with our patient-specific um, neurons, that we can actually ask in the future, um, the kind of medications that we're developing, is it going to be applicable to all of the patients, or is it going to be some selective patients? And can we actually even be able to predict toxicity? And uh, furthermore, um, I think that with this type of disease in a dish, not only will first um, help us to understand the pathophysiology, number two, it will help us to be able to develop biomarkers that will, be able, will help us to be able to uh, predict who in the clinic will develop something like Alzheimer's disease. And number three is that can we use um, the disease in a model, um, a disease in the dish model to be able to screen for drugs that are actually a little bit more appropriate to um, that particular patient. So therefore we can actually extend this technology into personalized medicine and make it very specific for that patient. Exciting results, exciting possibilities. Thanks for being with us, Shauna. Thank and thank you for being with us on Neuroscience's Connections.